What's up guys, Miles here with 9to5Mac, and if you're a fan of good ideas, consider subscribing to the channel for future content like this. These three Macs being presented to you are all available to purchase from Apple's website right now. For what feels like the first time ever, Apple is offering multiple small form factor desktops that serve all kinds of different purposes. But today I wanted to specifically focus on video and photo editing performance and see what the difference is between the M1 Max Mac Studio, the M1 Mac Mini, and the Core i7 Intel based Mac Mini. Let's first start with the specs of the Intel Mac Mini. This machine's powered by a 2.3 GHz 6 core i7 processor with 16 GB of upgradable memory and 256 GB of storage. And obviously, there's no dedicated GPU in this guy, so it's simply rocking the integrated Intel UHD 630 graphics card from Intel. These models can be equipped with 10 gigabit ethernet, but this one's only got the standard gigabit option. As far as ports, there's plenty to choose from here. You've got four Thunderbolt 3 ports powered by two Thunderbolt controllers, and they sit alongside gigabit ethernet, HDMI, USB-A, and a headphone jack. As spec from Apple, this machine will cost you $1,500 new, which is honestly an insane amount of money to spend on a Mac like this, and you'll see why later in the video. The M1 Mac Mini is technically the quote unquote base model Mac Mini out of the lineup, but as we all know, the M1 chip is far from a base model in terms of real world performance compared to the i7 Mac Mini. The M1 Mac Mini is powered by the Apple M1 chip, which consists of an 8 core CPU and 8 core GPU alongside a 16 core neural processor. This model here has 16 gigabytes of non-upgradable memory and 256 gigabytes of storage. As far as ports on this machine, you're looking at two Thunderbolt 3 ports powered by two Thunderbolt controllers, and then those ports sit alongside gigabit ethernet, an HDMI port, USB-A, and a headphone jack. So not too different from the i7 mini in terms of I.O. You're mostly missing those extra Thunderbolt ports. This Model S spec from Apple will run you $899, which is significantly less than what you pay for the i7 mini. Then last but not least, we've got Max Studio. This model here is powered by the M1 Max chip, which consists of a 10-core CPU, 24-core GPU, and 16-core neural processor. This one comes with 32 gigabytes of non-upgradable RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. And obviously, compared to the other two minis, this one's a little taller. It literally just looks like 1.3 Mac mini combined. Uh, so not a super flattering design, but certainly nothing to complain about. As far as ports, you firstly got two USB-C ports on the front alongside a UHS-2 SD card reader. And then on the back, you've got four Thunderbolt 4 ports with its own individual Thunderbolt controller for each port. Then you've got a 10 gigabit ethernet port as standard, two USB-A ports, an HDMI 2.0 port, and a headphone jack. So as far as ports goes, this is a near perfect Mac for my usage. A lot of people are looking at devices like Mac Studio and the M1 Mini as potential video editing machines and particularly for Final Cut Pro. So I ran a handful of different export benchmarks to get a real world understanding of how these three machines will compare. The first test consisted of a 4K 24p H.265 video from my Canon R5. I threw that into a timeline, chopped it up and added some effects and transitions, and then I exported it to an H.264 video file. The results from this test will clearly show you that Mac Studio and the M1 Mini are simply light years ahead for handling relatively basic HEVC video files. There's only a three minute difference between Mac Studio and the M1 Mini, but the i7 Mini took nearly six times as long to complete as the M1 Mini, and it cost $600 more from Apple, which is crazy, but also not necessarily surprising because Apple's not one to change prices just because they introduced something new and cheaper. Mac Studio came in at two minutes, 31 seconds. The M1 Mini came in at five minutes, 37 seconds. And the i7 Mini came in at 29 minutes and 11 seconds. And like I said, the difference between the M1 Mini and Mac Studio obviously isn't that huge, but the difference between i7 Mini and the other two Apple Silicon Macs is very huge and a lot of people wanted to crap on Apple's uh, GPU when M1 was first announced, but Apple's 8-core GPU clearly destroys 
the Intel UHD graphics, even though when that card was new, it wasn't anything to brag about necessarily. Next up, I decided to test some 4K60 H.264 video from my Canon camera, pretty much doing the exact same thing, which is throwing it in the timeline, chopping it up, and throwing on some effects and transitions. I then exported this to an H.264 video file once again, and the results are pretty similar overall, just with a little added time due to that higher frame rate. The i7 mini took nearly 50 minutes to export, while this Mac Studio finished the export in just under six minutes. The real world time being saved here by editing on Apple Silicon is just on another level. It's also interesting to see that given the $1,100 difference between Mac Studio and the M1 Mini, the differences in performance for this kind of stuff is very close given that price gap. Mac Studio only took five minutes and 20 seconds to export this video, while the M1 Mini took 11 minutes and 48 seconds, and the i7 Mini coming in at 46 minutes and 42 seconds. So i7 Mini clearly getting obliterated here. I wanted to test out how footage from a cinema camera would perform between these devices. So I got some 6K raw footage shot on a RED camera. And once again, the i7 Mini is really, really showing its weakness here. Mac Studio took just under 15 minutes to render with the M1 Mini completing it in nearly 36 minutes, but the i7 Mini took nearly two and a half hours to complete the export for this sub 10 minute video. You could watch a feature length film before the i7 Mini completes that export, but on Apple Silicon, you'd only be waiting 15 to 30 minutes for something like this. So for anyone shooting on a red camera, you're probably good to ditch your integrated Intel graphic machines now, if that's something you were ever doing. You kind of be crazy to be doing that though. The exact numbers here are 14 minutes and 23 seconds for Mac Studio, 35 minutes, 52 seconds for M1 Mini, and two hours, 28 minutes, and 21 seconds for the i7 Mac Mini. That thing is just such a slouch, and it clearly was never geared to handle red footage. I wanted to show some love to my Premiere Pro users out there who wanna know what editing performance is like between these three machines. And that's why I did a test on all three machines using Puget Bench, which is a popular benchmarking solution for DaVinci and Adobe apps made by Puget Systems. This test consists of a bunch of benchmarks that stress the CPU, GPU, and both simultaneously for things like encoding, multi-camera playback, things like that. Mac Studio completed the benchmark in around 22 minutes, while the M1 Mac Mini completed it in around 36 minutes. So noticeably longer, but nothing crazy. And the issue here with the i7 Mini is that it went on for about 53 minutes. That's when I decided to cut it off because it had been stuck at 0% for nearly 30 minutes on a heavy GPU extreme test. It just, everything froze up. The Mac Mini completely choked up. So I decided to cut it off there, but this essentially proves that this Mac couldn't even essentially handle that benchmark with its integrated GPU, which goes to show you, like I've been saying for the entire video, that integrated GPU is just not going to cut it for a lot of today's work. As far as the exact kind of video that Puget Bench uses for its benchmarks, it's using 4K H.264 and 4K H.265 video, as well as 4K R3D files, which is from the RED camera, just like with the previous test I did in Final Cut Pro. We can essentially just eliminate the i7 Mac Mini from this aspect of the comparison because it couldn't even finish the benchmark within a reasonable time. I think the more important takeaway here is the difference in scores between the Mac Studio and M1 Mac Mini. The Mac Mini with M1 got a score under 400, which is honestly a little surprising, while Mac Studio got a score over 800. So that's a pretty huge jump. That's well over double. And it's safe to say that the GPU in Mac Mac Studio is quite strong, even though it didn't take substantially longer to complete the benchmark as far as the M1 versus Mac Studio. Lightroom Classic is a popular photo editing application, and I wanted to do some timed exports between these three machines. I couldn't actually run Puget's Lightroom benchmark because I'm on a Mac and it only has Windows support thus far, but I used the exact same photo files that they include in that benchmark and just did some timed exports of the three photo groups. I firstly started out with a group of 12 22 megapixel photos and exported them to JPEGs in 100% full quality. Quality. 
I then did the same thing again with 1242 megapixel photos and then with 1245 megapixel photos. Between all these machines, clearly the Mac Studio is the fastest, but given the fact that none of these tests even go over a minute, it's safe to say that any of these machines are pretty competent photo editing boxes. And that's because applications like Lightroom aren't as GPU intensive as other applications like Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro. So if you mostly edit photos and are looking for a Mac mini type device with an Intel processor, which you know, it's a very niche group nowadays, the i7 mini is definitely one to consider just based on these results alone. It's once again, really nice to get a refresher of how capable Apple Silicon is inside of Mac hardware. And not just purely because of the numbers I've shown you, but because there was a handful of aspects of the experience that I had while running these tests that totally separated the i7 mini from the M1 mini and Mac studio. Every test I did had the i7 Mac mini's fans practically on full blast. The machine got notably warm and struggled to really do anything else effectively on the operating system while most of these video benchmarks ran. And just the experience of using the i7 mini with my ultrafine 4K monitor felt a little choppy and sluggish in comparison to the mini and Mac Studio. And I'm definitely not getting the full 60 Hertz when scaling the resolution up a bit on the Intel mini. Many things like that are what make me firm in my decision to never go back to Intel Macs. And so it's honestly quite baffling to see Apple sell this Mac mini at full price when and it simply can't keep up for the most intensive tasks. Yes, Mac Studio is the fastest mini Mac from Apple, but when taking a look at most of these benchmarks, you can see that the M1 mini was never too far behind Mac Studio, which costs over a thousand dollars more. And yes, there are many benefits in general that you get for the $2,000 price of Mac Studio, but when it comes to video and photo editing specifically, it's quite clear that the M1 mini is still the best value Mac desktop you can buy right now. And it definitely shouldn't be overlooked from a performance standpoint. Point. Personally, I'm probably going to keep using the Mac Studio just because it's new and shiny and I like new and shiny things. But as I said, the M1 Mini is still such great value for the money and the i7 Mac Mini is it's there to buy if you want it. But I personally suggest you don't. It just can't keep up on the video side of things. And if that's a priority for you, going with Apple Silicon is a no brainer. But if you want to run a server farm or get involved in tasks that won't stress the GPU out at all, then I definitely say that the Intel Mac Mini may be worth considering. But that's gonna be about it for this one. Let us know which Mac you would buy in the comment section below. Would you take Mac Studio, the M1 Mini, or the Intel Mac Mini? Let us know. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.